Good morning folks, you join me at uh, Morton in the Mars station where I'm about to uh, start filming the uh, old Lost Shipton branch line but what I'm doing first off is I'm just getting a little bit of reference uh, video of that white building over there now if you look at that it looks a little, a little bit closer it looks vaguely Art Deco but in actual fact, that was uh, built and started operating in 1887. And that's a milk processing plant, or was a milk processing plant or creamery. And uh, right next to it is a rather magnificent red brick chimney. And uh, that's the reference we want to uh, locate exactly where the Shipston line departed the platform okay I'm on uh, platform three of the old issues platform I'm just going to put up this uh, photograph from about 70 years ago um, which shows uh, the branch line to ships and two sidings you can probably uh, you can sit much better see the uh, red brick tower in the background just zoom back out a little bit there we are so there's the photograph that shows you the branch line um, you can see um, how uh, sharp the bend is as the, as the train leaves the platform um, and it caused one commentator to say um, the uh, bend was so sharp that it caused the uh, flanges on the wheels to squeal in protest it tells you how sunny how sharp it was so we turn back around here, this is probably going to go in the sun. Can't see an awful lot of anything on this platform. This platform edge. So, the rostered trains for the day, for every day, would come from Kingham. They were all based at Kingham. And uh, they roll in train and rolling, usually uh, pulling mixed freight and uh, a couple of passenger coaches and uh, the bulk of their cargo was um, coal on the freight and uh, parcels and all bound for ships to non sour old signal box back down there they do keep this well cut back but uh, as you can see there's to not a lot of evidence of the old uh, ships and branch line so here's the track bed then and uh, not giving much away is it carries on all the way down here there quite a way still carries on and then suddenly we get a curve in the footpath the line goes through there Just here, we pick up our first clue. There you have concrete fence post. Another concrete fence post. And another concrete fence post. And another. And another. And that. Presumably the boundary fence of the branch line. 
can't go any further this way. It's down in here. It's a deep ditch. That's a storm drain. And we're the other side of the railway now. And here's our milk processing plant. And it's rather magnificent chimney. Just about this point, a uh, siding would have gone up through that uh, between the white building and the uh, red brick, the Bar Barnbrook building, um, and terminated just out of sight around the corner of buffers. That was presumably to bring in uh, or take out probably milk churns. So the branch line would have gone straight up through where those vans are. I'll just zoom in gently. If you can see that uh, white wall up there and the roof with the uh, wood burning stove chimney on the, on the gable end, the line would have gone to the right of that. And uh, just beyond that it would have uh, veered slightly to the left. Okay, the train is now approaching the level crossing, the Tottenham Road level crossing, and it's slowed to four miles an hour, that's the regulation speed, and uh, sends its whistle and uh, emerges on the Tottenham Road crossing next to the original crossing cottage, and the gatekeeper has already opened the, uh, or closed the road with the gates. The train crosses the level crossing over the road and uh, as it passes through the gate on this side, the gate is closed behind it and locked because this particular railway offers it a one train in steam only policy. So the train's locked in and no other trains can come through and uh, in latter years, the uh, task of locking the gates would have gone to the firemen and the guard, one opening, the other closing and locking. And on the return to Morton Station with the train, the uh, key would be deposited on the, at the signal box on platforms two and three. And uh, maximum speed allowed between the crossings was 20 miles an hour because of gradients and bends etc etc um, this particular piece of line uh, wasn't part of the tramway it was part of the upgrade um, because of the original tramway if I can just turn that way slightly over there see all those, I'll zoom in a bit more, see all those agricultural machines parked there and in the background that rather large house with multiple chimneys that's uh, the, the route the tramway took from here through to the uh, supermarket car park that's there now that was the original coal wharf um, ran across the front of Blenheim um, Blenheim Farm, which is, the, I say, the big building with the chimneys on, so it basically followed the Foss Way all the way through to the to the coaling wharf and uh, connected to the uh, this section of line somewhere here. So whether there must have been another crossing point there somewhere. So that's the uh, the first section of the uh, line with the first. Uh, crossing cottage and of course the most important one because it had to uh, deliver the policy of uh, one train and steam only. Now I thought while we're here we'd have a quick look at this. This is the very first section of line outside of uh, Morton proper. There's the crossing cottage just through the uh, trees there. I'm going to zoom back out. No, not that way. I'm going to zoom back out Full zoom, there we are. I'll turn around and we're in a bit of a cutting. So, this is the very first section of line. So, we'll just have a little walk along here. It's not the uh, easiest of places to get through. What do we see there? 
load of red brick chuck down in there, I don't know what that's for there's a building there doesn't look to be much red brick, no, I think we'll call that one unknown, okay a bit of a mooch along here see if there's anything uh, railway related other than the track Oop. and immediately you start finding guardian brambles getting in your way getting a bit windy as well as I suspected it would A bit of a cutting going on. We won't be going very far along here because uh, somewhere just along here it's actually fenced off. But um, I've never walked this bit before so might as well have a look. Brands don't do you any favours at all. Here we are. Still going. Oh, so there's a little bit of a footpath along here, so if somebody walks along here. Unless it's badgers, it could be badgers. spotted the first signs of a uh, GWR railway fence. Nothing back uh, at the start. But that's definitely a concrete post. And there's another concrete post buried in ivy under there. So, yeah. Okay. Nothing on the uh, this side of the main road. But that's uh, not surprised me at all because there isn't any along this main road, I don't think. Okay, bear with me. Here we are. No brambles negotiated. I don't think you'd get through here in the summer. At all. No. Rabbit holes now. There we go. Broad gauge rail post and strut. Got to wear in there, strangled by ivy. So this field is fenced in places. I don't think we'd see an awful lot along here. Anything that was uh, railway has obviously been ripped out. Apart from the fence, still seeing concrete posts and line wires, but uh, not a lot else.
I've not, we're almost at the fence now, so I'll keep going. To that point, and then I think we'll uh, probably give up on that one. Just a quick look through there. There's the fence blocking the track. Beyond that is any god's amount of um, storage containers. There's a storage container business going on there. Across the track bed, so that's completely obliterated. So uh, I think we'll call that one um, interesting. And there's the old track bed heading off down there. I can zoom in on that structure. That's a uh, converted shipping container, clad in wood. And just behind it, just behind it, you can see, oops, you can see the chimneys of Foss Lodge. And um, there's a theory that um, Foss Lodge was um, something to do with the old horse-drawn tramway and was actually used as a warehouse. I can't confirm that, but uh, that's what uh, the rumours say. And there's another view of a piece of original track bed. Uh, very pleased to see that. There's not a lot of it uh, actually visible anymore near Morton. I'm just going to pan round to the left. And finally... There, there we are. Very pleased to find a bit of original GWR railway fence tucked away in there. I don't know if you can see it. Just zoom in a little bit. Here's a piece of uh, broad gauge rail acting as a post. Can't see a strut on that one. Should be one, it must have fallen off. There you go. Dawn Heath Farmhouse, and uh, I'll just come slowly round to the left. And there we have the original track there. It's better. Now, the old maps show the railway going straight across this drive so presumably the rails were embedded in uh, whatever substrate the drive was made of back in the day I'll just turn round to the right and there we have a section of the original track bed it's, uh, it's all flat between uh, here and Morton Station. We should now be looking down into a deep cutting and uh, it's anything but, it's more like an embankment. They just keep chucking stuff in there. And uh, if you look through there, it's got a load more in. There is a development, housing development planned out in the field behind the far hedge. Whether that, um, this has all got something to do with that, I don't know. Okay, we're about, uh, coming up for a quarter of a mile outside Morton in the marsh. Now, out there, and through that gate, I don't know if you can see that security gate. Um, that just about lines up with the track bed. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Looks like a new electric substation in there. This is actually the site of the first bridge um, on the branch coming from Morton. Um, this is or was Sand Pit Bridge. Long since disappeared. Um, I did, however, recently speak to the uh, gentleman who claims to own this particular bit of track bed and he assures me that uh, when the bridge was dismantled 
they took the girder work off the top and the abutments and the uh, two pillars, the uh, blue engineering brick pillars are still somewhere under all that landfill so that's a quite an interesting uh, bit of information you say first bridge on the line from Morton um, and of course it's no longer visible so uh, we'll carry on down the line towards Shipton and as you can see now the uh, line has diverged away from the A429 Fosway turned slightly northeast and heading in the direction of Stretton on Foss Station and we'll carry on down there to the corner of that field and just the other side of that is our next uh, point of interest Okay, arrived at uh, Lemington Lane. It's where the railway crosses the road. Let's have a quick look there. There's the old railway track bed going off up there. And then we pan round. There's the giveaway sign, Crossing Cottage. But that's a bit of a red herring. And there is the line on the other side of the road, heading in the direction of Stretton on Foss and Shipton on Stower. So we've got a bit of an anomaly here. Now I'm going to walk down onto the uh, original track bed. down here and then we turn round and we look back and we can see the uh, difference in the levels between the uh, track bed on the other side of the road and the track bed on this side of the road and the reason for that is that there used to be a rather fine if a little small stone built bridge across the road. The problem with the bridge really was um, it wasn't uh, built on a skew, it was built across, across the rail, a railway and at right angles to the railway track. So in actual fact what it created was a quite uh, unexpected sharp Z bend in the road. I suspect that's what proved to be its downfall. Um, the bridge was uh, designed by none other than John Erpeth Rastrick and part funded by Law Reedsdale of uh, Batsford Estate. Um, Rastrick, of course, is famous for his uh, design and engineering of the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. So he was a designer and uh, Unfortunately, in 1986, this bridge was demolished. I, I can say with great pleasure, and of course there would be a carcum, I can say with great pleasure I spent a whole week in Lower Leamington, which is a little bit is just behind me, on a tree, tra uh, tree planting contract. And I drove over this little bridge twice a day for about a week, week and a half, and it was it was nothing spectacular, it was like your ordinary rural little country lane bridge but it was a piece of industrial archaeology and uh, it's gone which saddens me somewhat so there you have it that's the uh, bridge, or was the bridge, across the Leamington Lane and I'll just turn back round and uh, we'll have a quick look down this uh, track on the way to um, Stretton on Foss and you can see what's gone on here they've got some uh, what looks like uh, tarmac road planings on, on the cheap they've resurfaced the uh, the old track bed 
and called it a private drive which to my mind is uh, well I won't tell you what's on my mind but um, yeah this is what happens unfortunately with these old railways um, I don't propose to walk all the way down there I'm going to stop just here um, I do have access via a footpath off the Foss Way about 500 yards further down there um, and we'll see what it looks like on the, uh, further down but again if you look on that side of the track bed no GWR fence and similarly on that side no GWR fence so I don't know why they did that there is a ditch in fact there is a ditch on both sides so perhaps they felt the ditch with the hedge was enough to cattle proof it I don't know there's definitely no fence there anyway and no infrastructure on that section of the track so uh, Just going to grab this post for a second to lean on. And we'll see if we can zoom down the track a bit and see if we can spot anything at all down there. From satellite, it's completely deserted. There's nothing, absolutely nothing railway way related down there at all. There you go. That's a fair old way down there. So, as I say, I'm going to bypass this. I'm just taking a couple of hours out for lunch and uh, look what's happened to the weather. Crazy weather at the moment. So, um, we're about a quarter of a mile down uh, the track in a northerly direction on this so called private drive. Um, now, why I'm coming down here is because in the recent past, two people have said to me that Lemmington, Lower Lemmington, which is around a little bit, way through those trees, probably another quarter of a mile. Lower Leamington uh, had a crossing cottage and uh, I've looked on Google Earth and I can see a very large building where there might have been a crossing cottage but um, nothing's showing up definitely as being crossing cottage shaped so I thought come down here I'm not sure how close we are to that uh, said uh, property, but if we can get close enough to have a look, I just want to clarify whether there is a crossing cottage or not. What we do have down this end, all of a sudden, is a GWR railway boundary fence. Concrete posts. Most of the line wires are gone bit of a surprise because there's nothing at the top end. I'm going to get a bit of wind noise now but uh, never mind. Okay bear with me I'm going to have to uh, abandon the track and go down this uh, probably get a lot of wind noise now. So I'm probably going to switch the soundtrack off and go to text and then it's uh, headland a little way. Oh, looky there, a mile post. Well, I never, and I didn't think I'd find anything down here. Surprise, surprise. And suddenly, we've got a railway fence on this side as well. Concrete post line wires. So, this must be the posh end. Okay, let's ignore all those um, extensions on the right and on the left and concentrate on the building facing us the gable end with two arched window openings. Now that uh, is a bit of a giveaway. If you stripped away the render and the paint on that gable you'd probably see a bricked up doorway to the left of the downstairs window um, I'll put up a picture of an original crossing cottage for comparison um, and you can very soon see that that uh, 
gable end, that building facing us with all the paint and uh, render and extension stripped away is most definitely the Lower Leamington Crossing Cottage, without a doubt. Okay, for this shoot I've walked in off the Fossway, A429, about half a mile and uh, I thought I'd start here, because I'll show you in a minute, uh, wind permitting. There's a culvert, I'm presuming that's railway. I don't know what that particular stream is. I'll be able to find it on a map. Um, so we'll, I'm going to turn and we'll walk. I'm going northwards towards Stretton on Foss at this point in time. I'm just going to get back into the sh sh shelter a bit. And then I'll turn back to the south and show you uh, what the farmer's been up to with the uh, track bed. It's going to go up here. Try and get out of the wind a bit more. Oh, there's a sleeper gate post there. Interesting. Right. Looking south. And uh, they didn't spare uh, anything on that particular section of the track bed, did they? That's completely wiped out, apart from the embankment, and they've cut all the foliage and bushes and whatever down, but uh, not a lot of point tra traversing that one, except on the way back out, of course. So I'll just reset the. and we'll walk to the north towards Stretton on Foss and see if we can see anything railway on quite a steep embankment here this section I think we I think we're pretty lucky this section appears to be okay I don't know what it's like further on but this is walkable Oh, here we go. Just down there. Covered in ivy. A sawn off telegraph pole. Railway for the use of. So that's the first. Oh, that's the second find. Colbert was the first. Okay. So, seem to be finding a lot of uh, telegraph poles. Ex telegraph poles. <laughs> Carry on down here. Anything over there? Apart from pheasant pens and pheasant feeders? Nope, really. Big water container there. And out for pheasants. Gated access in. And what do we have here? A little bit of white paint still on it. That's a gradient marker post, GWR style. That's a nice find. Okay. Carry on. And what's going on there? That looks like a piece of old broad gauge rail. Now is that... Um, Reinforcing a culvert, the top of a culvert, do you suppose? Don't know. It's certainly attached to another, possibly another uh, broad gauge rail, so it's covering something over. 
Hmm, interesting. I just spotted a see through there. Railway boundary fence. Wooden posts. Oh, and a couple of concrete ones there, so it's a bit of a mishmash. But it's there, nonetheless. We'll carry on. Another sawn off telegraph pole railway. And there's a, an assortment of uh, blue engineering and uh, standard red bricks. And what they're doing there, chopped down in a pile for some reason. And then, before we've gotten very far, that lot. We're not going to get through there. Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping this was going to be a bit longer a walk than this. Right, we'll uh, we'll go out through there because it says no vehicles and no horses, so I'm exempt. I hope. And uh, we'll walk down the west side of the track and. See if we can bob in and out of uh, any accessible points. Very wet underfoot in here, it's very clay, this ground. It's difficult to stand up on. Here we go then. Oh dear, that's a complete and utter jungle in there. Just going to reset the, uh, the camera. There we are, that's a bit better. Yeah. You weren't going to be going in there without a uh, chainsaw and a machete. Not seeing anything on the far side of uh, what is now, I think, a cutting. Yes, it is. Now gone into a cutting. Completely overgrown cutting. I'm going to have to watch these briars. They are bloody lethal. Here we are. Can't see them there very well. Seeing an awful lot to all. That's a shame. Dodge around that briar. That's a nasty one. Right, bit of a view through there. You can see over the far side. We've still got a railway fence on that side. But absolutely nothing on this side. So, set, reset that. Press on. If I remain upright a bit tricky. Okay, I've got a bit of an access point in here. Let's see if we can uh, spot anything down in here. Railway fence on the bank still. Very small telegraph pole tucked away in there, chopped off. Another pheasant feeder, as you might expect. Oh, I'm going to go back to the outside, I think it's a lot easier to uh, get through there. Drop down in here for another look. Try not to fall down rabbit holes. I'm not going to see a lot in here either. Definitely in a cutting, not very deep and not very wide either. I didn't dig this one out very much. Up there. Not on the bank, the railway fence is gone. On completely. That's it, leasing back through there. Okay, we'll press on. And unfortunately, now this is a complete and utter waste of time because it's uh, totally grown in. 
they're uh, trying to fill the uh, shallow cutting with anything they can get their hands on, bricks, whatever, spoil from building sites. It's almost completely disappeared. We'll just have a look through there. Probably can't see it. I might be able to zoom in on it a bit. There's yet another sawn off telegraph pole, Great Western Railway style. And uh, I think that's about the last thing we're going to find on this section. So I'm going to call it a day and go back to the car. And uh, the next part of the adventure involves a bit of a detour. Um, so we'll pick up from that and uh, carry on with the adventure. Okay, I've had to resort to a footpath uh, up to the old uh, track bed for this particular shoot. Um, and while we're on the way up there, I thought we'd have a quick look out there. I don't know if you can see it. You can see all those lumps and bumps and dips and mounds. That is the uh, medieval village the abandoned medieval village of Lower Ditchford. Um, circa around right about 1066 to 1550. Why it was abandoned, nobody knows. Um, but that's quite an extensive uh, piece of ground there. And it's all starting to go a bit murky. We're losing the sun here. I think there's a weather front coming in. Um, over there in the gloom is the old uh, not Chips and Branch line. And out here where these sheep are is uh, a nice little bit of ridge and furrow field. I don't know if you can see that on the, uh, on the film. That's obviously... Uh, in with the medieval village. Also some drainage channels there by the looks of it. Apparently they used to flood the meadows in the winter. Yeah, so uh, I just slowly pan back round to the left. There we are, and at last this uh, footpath is headed towards the railway line. So uh, we'll press on. Those two pieces of wood look very familiar. A couple of railway sleepers, posts and a strut. On this walk we've been uh, following a line of willow trees which are across the old, uh, the other side of the old medieval village. I don't know if you can see them running up there. They come all the way up there from the Tottenham Lane. Through here and you might just be able to make out a little bit of uh, water where it turns a sharp right and then heads towards the railway track. This is the uh, Ney Brook. Ney spelt K-N-E-E. -E. Don't ask. And um, this is our clue as to the uh, uh, target we're heading for. So. That's a good find, um, but we've still got another, what, two, three hundred yards up there before we uh, get onto the old uh, Shipston branch line. Now, just to make things a little more confusing, this is the Paddle Brook, which somewhere across the other side of the railway converges with the Nay Brook. Runs off down there parallel to the old uh, track bed and then at some point goes under the railway so somewhere over on the other side of the track bed right let's see if we can find the uh, culvert to uh, an entry point where it goes underneath the railway crikey there's a lot of standing water in here look at that lot all down through there I need to be over here over here, if I can get there, a little quick glimpse. There's the paddle brook running off through there, and we're not going to go through there, so we'll divert around that lot. 
still going runs off down through there see that this is a bit farther than I thought but hey it's not raining so and I'm not sure about the uh, state of that whether that's crossable it probably is but uh, one thing we can definitely, definitely say for sure that's not railway however pan across there That's definitely railway. Here's the culvert. Getting a little bit closer. If I can. That looks like there's a log blocking that. Not much going down there. So yeah, that's a, that's a GWR special. That looks a bit culvert. Sides are looking, well certainly left hand side buttress is looking uh, rather the worse for wear but the other side's not so bad but the arch is okay I've lost a bit of pointing but generally in good condition so yeah that's the uh, entry point on the railway and uh, we'll see if we can find the other side when we go for the bridge And uh, it looks like, uh, from what I can see, we are missing an occupation bridge. An embankment to the uh, right of me, and an embankment to the left. This is getting a little bit dark now. I hope this film comes out alright. Yeah, occupation bridge missing. A bit of an attempt to uh, fence at the top. That's not railway, I don't think. That's. Uh, Probably post 1960. Yeah, definitely not railway. Any sign of any structure? Not a chance. And we've got the side a bit lighter on the other side. Same attempt at a fence. And uh, any structure? No. Okay, so we need to get up on the embankment on this side and uh, head back towards Morton in the Marsh. Occupation bridge point then, and we'll just come that way, and we're headed off down there. Oh, a little bit of uh, blue engineering brick there. I wouldn't mind betting that's uh, part of the bridge we've just come from. Quick look down through there. No sign of a GWR railway boundary fence at all. So, we'll just carry on. Lots of rabbit activity on this uh, embankment. going on here but, um, an unexpected rise in the track bed but somebody's been having a bit of a dig so this isn't uh, an attempt to block the track and look like it but uh, at the same time it's not uh, anywhere near as open as it was uh, it's not going to be fun Well, at least there is some sort of access. Just taking a short breather. When I look down the bank, and what do I see? All these were made of wood, of course. A three-sided box with a lid. Um, and iron numerals, obviously made by a smithy, on the two face sides. Um, uh, the whole thing popped on top, usually of a piece of broad gauge rail. Um, now this one's number 95. I'm thinking the one at uh, just outside Morton that we found was number 92. So somewhere in between is there a 94 and a 93. 
I wonder. And just there is the uh, culvert and the point at which the Paddle Brook exits the railway embankment. That will go on down there and eventually it converges with the Naybrook somewhere uh, behind all those willow trees where I won't be going. There you go. So that ties that one in. And by now, like me, you should be able to hear the sound of fast running water. Half's getting a little bit, a uh, little bit dodgy. Find a way around here. Carefully. Without falling down the embankment. And uh, looks like they've taken part of the embankment away here. I'll carefully make my way down. And first off, we'll have a look down here because the path split uh, right and left. Uh, not too bad, a little bit slippery. Instead of falling down and breaking his neck. No, here we go. Now then. Have a look at that. Difficult to see, but there is... I think some blue brick and red brick in there. And that is a very large piece of the Great Western Railway's Naybrook Railway Bridge. Have a turn over here. Somebody, I don't know what's in there? Oh, it's a wood store. Perhaps it's for um, insects and stuff. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for. Like that. Yet another piece of the structure looks to me like a pier. Oh, the hell it's got there, I don't know. Because that's going to be 15, 20 yards from the uh, railway track. There's another piece over there. Another piece round here. There's a load of brickwork down in there. As you can see. Another chunk of brickwork over there. And we'll come back up to the uh, sound of fast running water. Right, let's go and have a look up there. More devastation. Huge block, three huge blocks, and that looks like a uh, footing for presumably a pier. Pan across here, there's another one there, just more difficult to see. But there's only the one. And what was going on there between the piers? So we'll just have a quick look around here. That looks like a uh, bit of an abutment wall. Try and get down there a little bit without falling in the river. There you go. Difficult to see, but all the way along there's the red and blue brick um, abutment wall. I don't know whether there's one on the other side, I can't see it, but there is masonry structure, probably buried in those brambles up there. So yeah, that was, uh, I must admit when I set off on this adventure I didn't know what to expect here, but it turned out to be quite spectacular. 
always like to be uh, in the presence of the fast running water. It's uh, really soothing and calming. So what demolished it? What do we think? It certainly wasn't the brook. Demolition, bloated, and why bother to demolish it in the first place? Perfectly good railway bridge. It would have made a wonderful footpath right the way through from uh, the Tottenham Lane all the way down to Stretton on Post Old Station. Just such a waste. See that little wagtail? He's pushing his luck. Isn't that nice? Man, he's wading in. Go for it, son. Beautiful. Now, back before GWR took over this line, there was another bridge across this brook, uh, designed again by John Arthur Rastrick, and it was constructed of wrought iron and timber. Um, obviously that's been obliterated over the years. Um, I don't know whether I can find a photograph of that either. It was probably quite uh, ornate and spectacular. So um, hopefully that, a picture of that will turn up eventually, although it is a long time ago. Have a quick look up here. And there's something going on there. I'm not sure. Oh, that's another piece of uh, brickwork peeled over by the looks of it. What it's doing there, I don't know. And then there's a bit more uh, face stone just there. So it's quite a big area of construction. So there you have it. The former Naybrook Railway Bridge. Just crossed the uh, footpath to the uh, Stretton on Foss side of the occupation bridge. And look what we found straight away GWR railway fence. Looking reasonably good. Some of the line wires are, uh, it looks like they've been cut. And that goes on up there. Don't know how far. And as you would expect, right on the end of that particular fence line, a piece of uh, two pieces of broad gauge rail, fence post and strut, GWR trademark. Okay, so that's the way I would have got in had I been able to park the car. That's uh, looking north towards Stretton on Foss. There's the crossing cottage associated with this uh, section of the line Bring that a little bit more uh, that's really nice now uh, this is um, this is Todnam Lane and uh, to my right about a half a mile is the uh, Fossway A429 to my left is the village of Todnam next door to it is Wharf Cottage and that cottage was here um, that was built for the horse-drawn tramway. So that's older than the crossing cottage. The crossing cottage, brick crossing cottage, would have gone in sometime between 1882 and 1889. So that's nice to see that's still there. I've been sent round here by the gentleman in the uh, crossing cottage, and he said that uh, the owner might have something of interest. So let's go and have a look. Rare flags, flags, keep them busy, getting windier. I'm at the back of the crossing cottage now on the old track bed. Um, the gentleman's given me very kindly given permission to just walk up this track bed just to see it preserved. You're not going to believe this, folks. We've got another fully intact milepost here with the top, uh, wooden top in, intact, and I think, I think that's got to be three in a sequence, one after another. That's got to be incredibly rare. What a find, superb. 
Well, how about this then? One deconstructed railway culvert. I wonder how they were, how they were built. They were built like this. The reinforcing on the top, look. That's very interesting. I don't know what used to run through there, whether it was a stream up the side of the field at one time or just draining water off the field, I don't know. It's quite some uh, construction. Okay, the uh, demolished occupation bridge is about 50 yards back there. And uh, I just picked up the uh, embankment and the old GGBR railway fence running through there and through there about another mile and a quarter is the old uh, Stretton on Floss railway station site so let's go and have an explore we don't know how far we can get up here um, but uh, we can always drop back out onto the field and dodge at block bits so uh, let's get to it. Right, we're probably not going to get through there, are we? Oh well. Oh dear me, no. We're not going to get through there. Right, okay. Diversion time. Okay, I'm out on the east side of the railway. East side of the railway. And, uh... There's the, uh, hedge. With the track bed inside it. And, uh... Already noticing the distinct lack of the boundary railway fence on this side. Good one on the other side, on this side, nothing. Okay. Not a jot. Right. We press on up there then. Well, still not looking good, but from what I can see through this uh, thick hedge, uh, the line is going into a uh, cutting. Bank embankment back there. All of a sudden, it's now in a cutting. Can't see any, any access points so far. But, uh, well not without getting ripped to shreds. But uh, we live in hope, we'll keep going. Aha! Thank God for rabbits. Right, let's see if I can get in here without getting ripped open by this blackthorn. Ooh, that's mucky. That's all clay. We're in. Crikey. We are in. Whoa. That's one hell of a uh, cutting this end. That's a bit of a surprise. Let's have a quick look here. That could well be... That could well be, I don't know. Have a look at that. Oh no, that's, I think that's a knocked off uh, blackthorn tree stump. Crikey. I guess we can safely say we're pretty fortuitous that they opened up the other side down to the uh, Nay Brook, otherwise well, you wouldn't have been having much of a look at that either. I'll, uh, I'm going to get down in the bottom of there and just have a look uh, towards the ship, uh, the Stretton site and see what the going's like. I'll sign off a minute. Well, here's our first bit of railway evidence. That's a telegraph pole stump just there. And we look across through there and unfortunately they're going still bad to worse. That's a bit of a pain. I look up the embankment on that side. Not quite so steep that side, or not quite so high that side. And we've still got our um, railway fence on that side. Happily trotting along the top of there. 
So I wonder why they didn't fence the other side. Perhaps they did and it all fell down. Don't know. So there we are. We are now in a cutting. Having come initially off an embankment. But um, progress is frustratingly impeded once again. Back out in the field then. Still headed towards uh, Stretton Station site. I don't think we're going to get in this bit at all by the looks of it, apart from where I've just gained access this is uh, off limits to explorers if you've got a chainsaw and a machete which I haven't got or not with me and then we'll press on a bit further so we'll find another gap in fact, it looks as if the uh, farmer's uh, bulldozed the path or a trackway through across the track just down here. So we'll uh, head to that and have a look. Crikey, whoever opened that up meant business, didn't they? Look at that lot. Huge, great big gap cut in there. So they've either infilled the uh, cutting or it's levelled up. Let's have a look over this side. And there was a fairly large post. Is that a straining post for a fence or a gate post? Can't see any holes in it for uh, hinges. I can't see any hinges either. I reckon that's definitely railway though. Yeah, interesting. Might just be able to squeeze in here. That's these brambles. Ah, oh, that's a bit of post and rail. Maybe that's not railway then. Difficult to be sure. Right, I'm probably just about to get through here. It looks as if the uh, cutting has indeed levelled off. Oops. Now a quick look. Ouch. Still got the uh, railway fence that side. All intact, some of the posts are falling down. So that's still there. But look at that lot. That's the, that's the other end of uh, that first lot we looked at. I guess they didn't really want anybody getting in here, did they? There we go. Just, I'm going to have a look at this. Can't get it out of the ground. That looks like a piece of raw gauge rail to me. It is. I wonder what that's doing there. Oh well, another interesting find. Okay. Well, that's about your lot for this particular bit. We'll uh, move back out there and go a little bit farther down. I don't propose to go more than about 100 yards-ish and see if we can get in the other side. Change of plan. Let's move across to the west side of the uh, line and see if we get any better luck on the side that's fenced. Probably not. That looks just like one enormous 15 foot wide hedge. I notice the blackthorn and the flower buds are starting to move. So, springs out there somewhere. Okay, I can just about see through there. There's ivy, there's all sorts in there. So I think we might well be at a look on this section. I've had a look at some of it, found a few odds and ends. But um, just at this moment I'm not seeing the railway fence either. 
Oh, looks like that's gone as well. Right, we'll go a bit further. And then, uh, I think we'll uh, call that, put that one down to experience. I'll have a look at it, but uh, clearly that's officially abandoned. Let's see through there. Let's have a look. It looks as if it's going into a bit of a cutting again. Interesting. Oop. There's a hunting gate coming up, so maybe this is a footpath. Well, I'll sign off for a minute because uh, it gets a bit boring looking at brambles. Okay, looks like there's a bit of a bridle path here. There's the uh, little hunting gate over in the corner. So that must be another footpath. Well, it's not marked as well. And all of a sudden, the railway's opened up a bit. So let's have a little look. I'm going to get a bit of camera shake now, doing the limbo under a branch. Get too old for this thing. Right, let's have a little bit of a look down here. We can. So we've got no fence on either side now, so we don't quite know why the fence suddenly stopped. Well, the farmer's ripped it out. Not seeing very much in here at the moment. Litter. Yeah, that's about as far as we're going to go. Coming up to a blockage again. Privet. I'm allergic to privet. It makes me sneeze. Well, I shan't be going in there. I don't think. A quick look back through there. Don't see a lot. There you go. And then you see right at the very back. That huge thicket of blackthorn, and that's definitely off limits. Okay, strange. Say that somebody's made an attempt to open this end up. Why would you bother to do that if you're not bothered about the rest? Don't know. Okay, signing off again for a minute. And that fellow adventurers is just about where the line ends, and uh, the farm and the agriculture has taken over. So I've got uh, the left hand edge up this side, still no boundary fence, railway boundary fence, and up there, zoom in a little bit, it switches to the hedge on the right hand side, but the track's gone, the track bed's completely gone, and it doesn't reappear until about 200 yards away from uh, the old Stretton station site. And uh, that is about as far as we're going to get in this particular direction. So uh, we'll call that one once again. Interesting. Stratton on Foss station site then. I've been given kind of permission of the owners to uh, do a little bit of filming in here. So we're down the side of an embankment. And uh, a reinforced embankment by the looks of it. And just over the top of the embankment is would have been the railway track going into the station. Um, so this is uh, a reinforced embankment, um, part of the upgrade done by the GWR between 1882 and 1887. Goes up there, and then it peters out. And we'll just zoom back here. There's a some sleepers in the ditch that embankment goes all the way along there and there's a couple of lengths of rail at the top of the embankment there 
And the current owner bought the whole site in uh, 1991. So they tell me. And it was uh, not in the best of condition. This is the top end of that retaining wall that we just looked at. Quick look towards the uh, Golden Cross Inn and the Station Master's house. Can't see them from here very well. That's the way the track would have gone up to the uh, A429 Fosway level crossing. And that's the orig original Weybridge. It had partly collapsed, so the owner has rebuilt it. Not quite in the style that it was originally, but it's, it's in its original position. Just to the side of the uh, Golden Cross Inn. So that's a brilliant find. And the track bed goes on up there. Back towards um, the occupation bridge, the demolished occupation bridge that we saw, and the remains of the Naybuck Railway Bridge. Um, from what I can see through there, the farmers actually dug out the embankment because that should have gone on further up the up the slope. But as they say, that's the uh, way the track goes off in that direction. And there's another sleeper down in there, lying on the side of that uh, stream bank. No railway fence that I can see, but I'm guessing that uh, stream down there and the ditch and uh, probably a hedge this side were enough to uh, animal proof it so they didn't bother with the boundary fence. Right on through there, it's all falling down there. Passenger services to all stations on the line ceased in uh, 1929 and the uh, branch line finally closed in 1960. However, both Stretton on Foss Station and Longdon Road Station were mothballed in 1941 and the only staff left on the station sites were the crossing keepers. So from 1941 these two stations uh, went into decline and obviously that uh, didn't help their uh, situation with regard to basically falling apart. I was wondering when I'd find one of these. A nice uh, broad gauge post and strut, courtesy of Mr Brunel. And there's the Golden Cross Inn. Little change since the days of the tramway. And that building is currently almost 200 years old. In the days of the horse-drawn tramway, it was the Golden Cross Inn. Later it became, became the Golden Cross Hotel. And its current uh, job is the Golden Cross Holiday Hotel. And it's nice to see it repurposed for a good cause, doing what it did nearly 200 years ago. A view of the station master's uh, house, complete with extension and uh, newer windows, but still in situ. And that's Stretton on Foss.